So last night I took one eighth less of all my medications and I didn't have trouble sleeping, which is good. And I'm just waiting for the mouse I rescued to come out of his little nook and eat something and have something to drink before I release him into the wild. I think he's a little bit traumatized. So I think I'm feeling a little bit better. I'm still craving ice cream. I did manage to get some yesterday, but it wasn't a very good brand. I don't know the brands of ice cream down here. And so I'm going to perhaps work on catching up a little bit on self-dialogue, partly to see if the process has worn itself out for now, or if it reactivates something. And I think I've mentioned that a couple of times. First I want to read a little bit of a Krishnamurti bulletin, number 90. And I think I already did, but the trouble is when I pause the process, I don't remember where I left off. He says, I do not know what I am, but I'm going to find out. Then the question arises whether you can live in daily life without any control, without any comparison, which does not mean that you do what you like, but actually to live without a single direction which is without control. This demands a skill in action, which is an art to be learned, and in the very learning of it is its own discipline. You don't impose a discipline upon it. The very observation of how to live without control itself brings its own order. And to me, that's sort of what it's like in a manic state is not having control. So if one can learn how to live without any control, then perhaps when that energy of so-called mania comes in, it won't be problematic because we already are practicing the art of living without control anyway. So I just wanted to point out that little bit because I find sometimes Krishnamurti says things that feel similar to some things in those states. I'm not saying it's the same thing. It's more the same prompting and extrapolating it to that state of so-called mania, not saying it's the same thing he's talking about, but just saying that there are similarities. And I was thinking about how I wonder if the universe gives us free will to give the universe meaning. And the universe doesn't tell us what the meaning of the universe is, but it shows us a lot of different things and situations, and then we're the ones that give those things meaning. So we might see beauty, and we might see some kind of judgment, but we have that sort of free will and it's not necessarily free will because a lot of it is program conditioning. So there's a difference between meeting that reality, the universe with our conditioning, or to me it feels like in mania, each moment we meet, we make a new meaning and it and it gets out of hand sometimes because we see so much meaning and we're trying to make meaning and share that and it gets confused and overwhelming at times. And I wonder if meaning making is a perspective. It's a way of meeting life. And I feel like it's possible that there is a meaning trying to communicate with us. So the universe is full of meaning. In each moment there could be a hundred thousand meanings or a million meanings that we could possibly pick out. But we're picking out these salient meanings based on our conditioning, which is meaningless. 
so synchronicity in a way could be connecting with some other meaning synchronizing with that and that might not be the only meaning but synchronicity is a meaning making algorithm or seeing and correlating new meanings and actually acting on them instead of meeting the universe with old meanings and not acting but just sort of judging and saying well I've already seen that and I've already figured that out and then not acting and I wonder if one can in a way harvest the right meaning or at least go in the direction of the right meaning and then put some kind of meanings together or maybe dropping the meanings and always looking for new meanings and that could be part of the dialogue process too there's always new meaning and if one can just not accumulate them I've accumulated them by talking to myself and recording it, but it's necessary to keep the mind empty. And I think that's part of what I'm grappling with a little bit now is having very little memory, yet knowing what to do. And maybe there's nothing to do. Just back to talking to myself. And I'm still reading Judy Chamberlain's book, On Our Own. It's about the mental health system. And she talks about consciousness raising. And I feel like self-dialogue is definitely consciousness raising. I feel like I need to keep my consciousness up right now. And I wonder if map consciousness and trans consciousness is a type of synesthesia, a reorganization of the senses, and a melding together and a metamorphosis. In MAP there seems to be an energy and a magic phase, followed by some kind of dissonance phase, and some kind of synesthesia metamorphosis phase where there's a transformation of the senses and and new senses and new sensitivities. It's like the senses start talking together in ways that they never did before and they used to not communicate in this way because the self was in the way. But when the self loosens its grip, all of a sudden there's communication between other areas of the body and the being and the brain because it's not all wrapped up in the me and I wrote something about no past or future that what gets created is by virtue of the state of consciousness and when we go into so-called mania we see what that high energy and state of consciousness can create and we become adapted for that state and then when the energy is no longer there and we lose that state and we come back down to the consensus level we're no longer adapted for consensus consciousness and its division and we actually feel a lot of the energies of what that division creates and it can be really painful. I think the little mouse might have grabbed a chunk of cereal, but he went back into his nook. And I'm trying to find out where I left off. Sometimes I write stuff in my computer, and then sometimes I write on my notepad. So I'm just looking at some of the stuff from my computer. And I was reading some of the notes I took six years ago when I was in my first altered state of map consciousness and I wrote down a few of the bits that I wrote down 
which are interesting because they're things I wrote in somewhat of a frenzy, but they still apply today. And I wrote them down before I was diagnosed with anything or labeled with anything. And that's sort of how I was seeing the world. And six years later, when I do this process of self-dialogue, I look at those things, I'm like, whoa, I was seeing in the same sort of way back then when I went into those states. And I'm able to access some of it through self-dialogue. And I'll try and show the pictures I took of my original notes. I wrote down part of the new operating system is the proper use of language. So even six years ago, I had this idea that we weren't using language properly. And I've expanded upon that in lots of my self-dialogue. And I wrote, too much of one thing, we get unbalanced. Too much beauty, disappear into nothingness. And part of being in California is that I might have overdosed on beauty. And one pretty much almost disappears in the ego sense. And so it could be possible that ego elements come back into play. And I wrote down satisfying psychological cravings. Dolls are actual sense receptors. So that's related to sensitivity. And something I wrote down right after that was the hit of dopamine, it keeps us in the prefrontal cortex. So I talked a lot about dopamine in the prefrontal cortex. So it's interesting to do almost a year of self-dialogue and talk about all these things that I didn't even know I was going to talk about. It just sort of unfolded as part of the dialogue. But these are things that I had a sense of when I was in this state six years ago. So in that way, things don't really change in a way. What I'm trying to get at is that maybe it is kind of something if I saw it then in that powerful state and I'm seeing it now through just talking with myself. And that also could be related to whatever meaning or message wants to come through. And I wrote down, see everything as beautiful, but there's a danger in verbalizing it as others may not see it. And that's kind of related to what I was talking about with the buzz kills and how we can have that energy and be going along and and sharing it and, and being kind of in that state of so-called mania and then eventually the energy gets dissipated because it's not really shared, it's not returned, those perceptions aren't returned. And it's interesting that I put there's a danger in verbalizing it and that too is related to how others might perceive me or whoever as kind of out there because we're talking about beauty and how wonderful things are. And I wrote, don't assume others will see it, just be it as only those with eyes to see it will. And I wrote down, there is a silence out of which comes sound. We are the silence out of which comes sound waves, etc., which is either turned into the noise of the ego or the sounds and sights of nature. And to me, that is pointing to speaking as Gaia, how we can create noise in our ego mind or and we can speak from that, or we can actually speak as the sounds and sights of nature. And someone who does that really well, or who did, was Krishnamurti. He wrote a lot about how he saw nature and described it very beautifully. And I wrote down a quote from chaos, a system reorganizes itself into a new higher order of functioning. 
So I had a sense that I was in chaos then, but that perhaps it was organizing something into a higher order of functioning. It's interesting that so many of us become so apparently non-functional, yet the process is perhaps trying to initiate a higher order of functioning. And it's almost like it will initiate the higher order or or one will be non-functional. There's no medium there. And I wrote down extraordinary growth from personal crisis. And I'm not sure if I got that from somewhere or what, but I knew I was going through a crisis, even though I didn't think it had anything to do with mental health. Well, that's not true. There are hints in there about me saying, am I going crazy and stuff like that. And I wrote down, reality is the collective human nervous system. And our form is formed by other forms. And that's related to how we get warped. Our trajectory gets warped by other forms. So that's what I have from my notes so far. I will continue to harvest a few bits out of those as well.